Cape Breton's Rita McNeil has seen her share of life's ups and downs, from cleaning houses to starring in her own primetime television specials. She's been lauded for her lyrics and lambasted for her looks. She's also ferociously private and a reluctant interview. But despite this, she was very candid with us when we sat down to tea with her children, Laura Lewis and Wade Langen, at Rita's Tea House, a popular tourist attraction in the tiny hamlet of Big Pond, her birthplace, about a 40-minute drive from Sydney. Through it all, this hometown heroine has remained remarkably focused and downright nice. A single mother who raised her two children while doggedly pursuing a career that took years to build in a cutthroat industry. Rita McNeil, mother, provider, and entertainer who's adored by the working man. It's a working man and driving down underground. And I swear to God, if I ever see the sun. Her lyrics are heart wrenching, emotional, her voice haunting. This song about the blue-collar working men of Cape Breton's coal mines has been known to reduce grown men to tears. I never again will go down underground. Her appeal, it is said, can be found in the music, its down-home flavor, and the simple songs she writes that speak to everyone. When I go out there and I share a new song with the audience, I feel that uh, that's what I was meant to do, and uh, so I do it. What she was meant to do, to sing, to perform in front of millions, to sell hundreds of thousands of records, win a myriad of awards, and to be given this country's highest civilian honor, the Order of Canada. So what have we over here, Rita? A room in the tea house, a gallery of awards and family photos, memories of grandparents, a hardworking father, and a supportive mother who didn't live to see her daughter's career take flight. She knew from the time I was a little child that uh, I had a gift and um, she so believed in it and every, every chance she got, she encouraged me. A loving inheritance Rita has passed on to the next generation. Wade, if you had to say what makes your mother a good mother, what would you say? You know, she's there. She's always there. She's always been there. And uh, she's always been someone to talk to. She's a good person, very good person, good heart. Um, keep going. She's a good singer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> it's all right. I know you worked on it, dear, but you did good. I could rest you. You did good. Words that could describe Rita McNeil's own life. But hers is an unlikely success story. Why? Because the odds were stacked against her. I had some very lows, some very extreme lows in my life when uh, it was rough. Rough, like the years when her shopkeeper father and mother and their eight children had to struggle to keep food on the table. Or the fact that McNeil was born with a cleft palate, a crooked lip that made her an easy target for hurtful comments. Or that she was shy, painfully shy, still is sometimes. I've overcome that to some degree, and uh, here I am today doing things that are, you know, that you wouldn't associate with someone that's supposedly shy, singing in front of a lot of people, and, uh, but I do it because I love the music so much. Do you ever you know? want to throw up before a performance? Oh, I have, dear, trust me. <laughs> I've done that, been there, done that for sure. And there was a time in the 60s when 17-year-old Rita McNeil left home for Toronto to pursue her dream of becoming a singing star, only to find herself married with children, then divorced and cleaning houses, washing dishes to support them. There were times when it was really tough and you weren't quite sure how you were going to make everything work. And she was forced to be creative. We didn't have a couch or a Chesterfield at the time, but uh, we would buy all these pillows <clears throat> and we would get them for like 25, I think that was the most expensive one, 25 cents, 10 cents, and we would uh, rush through the door uh, on Saturday morning and uh, I always remember we would grab the best pillows. At the end of all of this and 
uh, after many, many months, I ended up with 350 pillows <laughs> on the floor, and it was gorgeous. It was very beautiful. Despite her best efforts, these were dark times when money was tight, singing was a faraway dream, and motherhood was a challenge. Did you ever say to yourself, I can't do this? Yes, I did. I look back and I say, I wish I could have Laura Little again. I wish I could have Wade Little again. I'd pick them up much more. I'd hug them much more. I'd do things differently. Were you conscious of the fact that times were that tough for your mom? Oh, sure. Financially, you know, we, we knew it was tough. But I think maybe sometimes she's, you know, too hard on herself. We were never neglected or, um, you know, we were always very loved. It was love of family that made Rita return to Cape Breton with the kids 20 years ago. But not before she started making a name for herself, singing at folk festivals and protest rallies for women's groups. It has been a long musical journey since then, and sometimes a painful one. A notorious example, this World Series game between the Toronto Blue Jays and the Philadelphia Phillies. When an American columnist made caustic comments about her weight, faithful fans were outraged. That is insulting. Consider the source. I think it was totally unfair. Do I wish uh, I were 110 pounds? I was once, and uh, I lived in that body for some time. My body's changed, and uh, what are you going to do? You have this... You have this life you were given. You have, you, uh, you have an obligation to make the very best of what you have. How do you feel when you read or hear criticism about your mom? Well, naturally, uh, not to, uh, not to uh, please. Wade Langen is not too pleased, both as Rita's son and as her manager. He began overseeing her career two years ago from his office in Rita's custom-built Sydney home. Does it ever make you angry to ever write a letter to someone or speak back to someone? Or You know, I think it would be a mistake um, for, for us to, 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 you know, speak out against it. And uh, we kind of have to uh, accept it because of the business that she's in. Some of the criticism can be biting and downright cruel. Yes. How do you deal with that personally? We sort of huddle together and we... We share the pain for a few minutes, or then I'll get a bit upset, and then they'll talk to me, and we'll talk it through. I'd be crazy to say that things don't sting and they don't hurt. Of course they do. But I'm used to it since I was a little child, so I've had lots of years of practice. We noticed a nick in the wall. Perhaps that's why she relies on her loved ones and friends. Her business is now very much a family affair. I've never felt as safe as I, I do now, having both of them work with me and for me. You see, while Wade manages her career, daughter Laura, married with two kids of her own, manages the tea house, one of the biggest employers in Big Pond. Laura also runs Rita's fan club and the mail order business. Is Rita the boss? Well, on paper. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, now you find out the true story. She, she is the boss. Mm -hmm. They've come a long way from the days when she and the kids lived here in what was once a one-room schoolhouse. It may sound a bit all too perfect. But it, it does. It, I'm like, come on, kids. <laughs> when your mother's not around, what do you say about her? Well, that, that, well I bet they say lots of things when they're not around. <laughs> is she really as nice as she seems? Yes, she is. She is as nice no as... No hard edges anywhere else? No, uh, she makes her point, she always makes her point, just in a very lovely, nice way. <laughs> Rita McNeil's life, from shy child to sensitive songstress, from down and out to front and center, an inspiring story of a single mother who knew that the greatest gift she could provide her children had little to do with money and everything to do with love. You want to uh, be able to uh, give the very best that you can. Providing love and letting them know they have a safe place is probably the, the, uh, the most important thing.